In the heart of a small town, a young child recovers from a sore throat. Just a common infection, they say. But within weeks, something begins to change. Pain creeps into the joints. Movements become stiff. A strange rash appears. The heart beats faster, not out of fear, but inflammation. What was once a harmless sore throat has become something much more dangerous. This is the story of rheumatic fever, a silent aftermath of an untreated infection. Rheumatic fever is an autoimmune inflammatory condition that follows an untreated or poorly treated group A hit streptococcal pharyngeal infection, more commonly known as strep throat. It doesn't happen right away, it's a delayed reaction, appearing two to four weeks after the initial infection. And when it does, it doesn't just affect the throat, it attacks the joints, skin, brain, and most dangerously, the heart. The immune system designed to protect the body gets confused. It mistakes the body's own tissues, uh, particularly those of the heart valves, joints, and brain, for the bacteria it fought off. This process, known as molecular mimicry, leads to inflammation in these organs. The heart's valves, especially the mitral valve, often suffer the most. Over time, this can cause lasting damage, known as rheumatic heart disease. The symptoms vary, but the pattern is clear. Migratory joint pain moving from one joint to another, often starting in the knees or ankles. Fever and fatigue a strange serpentine skin rash called erythema marginatum. In some involuntary jerky movements of the hands and face, a condition known as Sydenham chorea, and in the most severe cases, inflammation of the heart, carditis, which may not even show symptoms at first. To diagnose rheumatic fever, doctors use the Jones criteria, a tool designed to recognize the pattern. The major criteria can be remembered with the mnemonic J-O-N-E-S. J for joint pain, migratory arthritis. O for a heart-shaped O, meaning carditis. N for nodules, subcutaneous ones. E for erythema marginatum. S for sydenham chorea. And then there are the minor criteria, fever, elevated inflammatory markers like ESR or CRP, prolonged PR interval on ECG, and arthralgia. A recent streptococcal infection must be confirmed to apply the criteria. Diagnosis isn't based on one test. It's a clinical decision supported by evidence. Throat swabs or rapid antigen tests may show recent strep infection. Elevated ASO titers indicate the body recently fought off the bacteria. ECG, echocardiogram, and blood tests help assess heart involvement and systemic inflammation. Treatment begins with eradicating any remaining bacteria using antibiotics, most commonly penicillin. Anti-inflammatory medications like aspirin or corticosteroids help reduce joint pain and heart inflammation. But the journey doesn't end there. To prevent recurrence and future damage, secondary prophylaxis is key. Long-term antibiotic prophylaxis, often monthly intramuscular penicillin injections, can last for years sometimes even into adulthood, especially if the heart was involved. Rheumatic fever may begin with something as simple as a sore throat, but its effects can echo for a lifetime. Recognizing the signs, treating the cause, and preventing the damage, that's the mission. Because in the story of rheumatic fever, awareness isn't just knowledge, it's protection. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, share, and subscribe for more health-related content. See you in the next video.